الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله السلام عليكم everyone and welcome to Shaban showers bring Ramadan flowers this is a regular monthly open halaqa some people some people here today you attend uh, other halaqas with me and this is instead of that one and for those of you who attend this monthly open halaqa welcome and uh, I'm so happy to have you here this is a beautiful month Shaban and the it's really true this statement Shaban showers bring Ramadan flowers because there is real stuff going on in this month and it's really important to learn about those things so that we can all face what Shaban brings us both in a beautiful way and also be ready for whatever might be here that we need to deal with. Alaikum salam. Thank you, Maryam. Thank you to all of you and welcome to everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salatu salam ala khatul anbiya Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam ajma'in. So one moment, please. Just let me. Okay. All right. So I, there's a couple things. So the funny thing happened this morning, which is I, now some of you who've been married a long time will understand this. And some of you who have not may be sort of disturbed by this, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> so my, my husband who is my husband is a scholarly academic guy, but he doesn't really read books from beginning to end. He generally just looks up stuff and reads things that are pertinent to whatever he's studying. So when I published my book, Joy Jots, this is the first printing here in my hand, he, uh, I actually dedicated it to him and thought, oh, maybe he'll read it since it's dedicated to him. And he told me, oh yeah, I read it, but he didn't really, I could tell, like he read bits and pieces here. And so today, I don't know what happened, but he has decided to read this book. And he said the funniest thing, he sent me a, uh, a message saying, where, where do we start? Where am I supposed to start? So he's starting in week 31. Well, no, I, I'm telling you the story upside down. So I we went back and forth a little bit about the way the book is set up and telling him how it's set up. And and the reason I'm telling you he's sending me a message is because actually he lives in Scotland, he lives in the UK, very complicated story. And it has to do with what happened after Syria and the war in Syria and how we left Syria. And I came back to with my family. My son went to school. He couldn't find a job, found a job there. And that's the short, the short version. Anyway, so we're talking back and forth about this. And then he said, oh, my God, the, it, the week we are in is week 31. And he said, the title is Bankrupt. And he thought that was really funny. <laughs> And one of the reasons it's funny, of course, is because I have two kids going to graduate school next year. But I wanted to look at that with you today because sometimes I forget as well certain aspects of Shaban that I thought about before, and it's important to revisit them together. And uh, it's relevant to our talk today, so I'm going to share that with you. It's the week 31. Next week is Nusuf Shaban, and there's a little thing about that, which you can look at yourself if you have the book. But uh, so I want to read to you a little piece of this because it's called Bankrupt. And one of the things that can happen to us in Shaban is that we come to this month bankrupt after a year of exhausting our spiritual selves, and we're getting towards Ramadan. And we're just so exhausted. But that's not what this particular one is about. So this is Abu Hurairah reports that the Prophet said, Do you know who is bankrupt? The companions answered, The bankrupt, the bankrupt one amongst us, Ya Rasulullah, is he who does not have a durham nor belongings. So, someone without money. The Prophet وسلم, said, The bankrupt of my nation of his ummah, of the ummah of Muhammad, is the one who comes on the day of judgment, Yom Al-Qiyamah, with fasts, prayer, and zakat. Comes with fast, prayer, and zakat. Yet, he comes having abused someone. 
slandered someone and taken another's money. He is kept back. He's held back. And this one takes of his good deeds. And that one takes of his good deeds. Then if all of his good deeds, his prayers, his fast, his zakat, anything else he did is exhausted, before his offenses have been cleared, then some of their sins come off and go to him. And then he'll be thrown he will be thrown into hellfire. This is a really serious hadith that both should give us comfort and should concern us, especially in this month of Sha'ban, in this month of considering that our Ramadan is coming. There, there the, are the little, it's very short. So the little, it goes on to say, there is a syndrome wherein, this is Joy Jats, as one takes on more religiosity, she becomes short-tempered and judgmental. Her clothes may have gotten wider, but her heart has shrunken to a narrow way. His beard may be growing, but his compassion is shrinking. This is the bankrupt syndrome. And you all know it. You've seen it before. In life and finances, it is easy to go bankrupt when you do not understand how much money you have or the bills you have to pay. I remember my first paycheck at 16. I thought I was rich. It disappeared in a short 15 minutes. <laughs> and I quickly learned that if I was going to save money for college, I was going to have to learn to interact differently with money. In religion, we fill our hearts with fasting, praying, and paying zakat. Sometimes that can be like a first paycheck. Having not experienced the light of guidance before, a newly practicing Muslim can think she is rich in righteousness. This can translate into self-righteousness, arrogance, and judgmental behavior, which lead to generally poor behavior and then bankruptcy in the next world. It is very easy to point out faults in others to see how others have shortchanged us and to feel slighted. It is more difficult to recognize our own faults to see how others view us and to recognize the pain we may be causing other people. In order to protect our investment, we must learn to be people of the best behavior. We need to be living, breathing shelters for each other. We need to hold ourselves to great heights and be gently accepting of each other's states. The Prophet was an, ex an example of excellent behavior. He was helpful in the house. He would pause to speak to children and the elderly. He was patient with poor behavior. Once a Bedouin came into the Prophet's mosque in Medina, he grabbed the Prophet ﷺ by his shirt such that it, at the edge of it dug into his neck. The other companions, and especially Ahmad, went for their swords, but the Prophet ﷺ indicated they should leave him be. The Bedouin asked the Prophet ﷺ in short, brusque words about his identity, his prophethood, and the rules of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ answered him calmly, politely, and fully and the man became a Muslim. Protect yourself from bankruptcy with excellent behavior. Be a pleasant and forgiving person. When you are pleasant, you run less risk of hurting others. Smile at people. It counts as charity. You can rack up good deeds while avoiding people's heavy hearts. Make it a point to be well-behaved wherever you go, amongst Muslims and amongst non-Muslims. Be polite, great people, be agreeable. And the most important behavior is that rendered to those closest to us. Be loving and forgiving. Leave your nefis behind when dealing with parents, in-laws and husbands, siblings, friends and co-workers. Give people excuses as Imam Al-Ghazali recommends. Give your brother who has wronged you 70 excuses. And if you find not, look for another. Avoid argument, bickering and whining, complaining and loud sighing are all poor manners along with rolling of the eyes and mean sarcasm. Practice daily acts of kindness, avoid hurtful behavior, bring joy to others, avoid hurting anyone. As we work to increase our prayers, prepare for Ramadan and increase what we owe in zakat this year, let us remember that the riches of our faith is shown in our interactions with, another, with others, that our behavior be of gold, precious stones, and billion dollar investments. And let us never be of those who are bankrupt in any way in this life or the next. So, I bring that this up because I start with this because 
the idea of Shaba and Shaba is bring Ramadan flowers. My lighting is bad today. Is that we are in a time. Oh, the lights are on. Okay, never mind. We are in a time when this, we're, 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 this month, this is a special month for us. And there are a number of things that happens. One of the things that happens is Shaitan is on a rampage. He knows, Shaitan knows that in three weeks he's going to be shackled and not able to reach us. And so in this month, he's working hard to ruin your Ramadan for you by interrupting your good relationships, giving you highly sensitive feelings, making you upset about things and emotional about things, making you feel like people don't like you, that people are whatever, that they're, that they're leaving you out, that your husband is, maybe he is short-tempered. And so in this month, during this time when you're feeling, when you're just getting ready for Ramadan, and now shaitan is working against you, if you don't recognize that, you may find yourself drowning in it. So be careful with your manners in this Shaban. Excuse me, be careful with your manners. Be careful with the, your, your way of interacting with people. Wallahi, manners are everything. Rudeness is what causes some of the worst problems because you hurt someone. You can say something one way without hurting people. And when you hurt them, that's it. You, it's not just that you've said something, you've broken a relationship. So in this month, be very wary of shaitan and your nafs. Now Ramadan is coming and you're going to be facing your nafs. But this is the month where shaitan is working on you. You may be finding it more difficult to wake up for tahajjud, more difficult to pray fashion, more difficult to fast your fardal fast, more difficult to be kind and good to people. You may be finding all of these things. This is the work of shaitan. Fight shaitan with a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim and by knowing what it is. SubhanAllah, 80% of solving a problem is knowing what the problem is. This is the month where shaitan is attacking you. Shaitan is attacking you. Shaitan is, is chasing you down the road and doing everything in his power to make it so that you come to Ramadan upset, a mess, not excited, not ready, not cleaned, not, remember, we, or maybe we didn't say it here, but we, the Prophet ﷺ says that uh, Sha'aban and Mutahir is the month of purifying. Ramadan Mukaffir is the one that builds us and raises us, or erases, erases. So, but this is the month of purifying. So if instead of purifying, we are spending it upset and we're spending it in fights and we're spending it with our eyes rolling and we're spending it, then, then instead of Shaban showers bringing Mayflowers, we are sitting in a Shaban drought. And instead of bring, having showers, we're going to be entering into Ramadan thin and using Ramadan just to come back to health. And we want Ramadan to give us, to bring us to a new stage. All of your lives, you've been walking on this path of Islam. All of your Muslim lives. However, if you're a convert, maybe you came back to Islam older. But since you began on this path, you've been walking on this. And I know that many of you feel stuck because that's the nature of the human being. That's the nature of the human being, that we feel that we, that we can end up feeling stuck. And uh, this, this, uh, this feeling of stuckness, the beauty of this religion is that, when, is that once a year, and once a life in Hajj as well, but once a year in Ramadan, we have the opportunity to pull ourselves and move forward. If you can think of it like going from one grade to another, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. Uh, Yes, it's actually the whole hadith is Sha'ban Shahri. The Prophet ﷺ said, thank you very much, Lean, for answering that. But um, I'm just, I, I didn't say the whole thing, so I'll say the whole thing since some, somebody asked about it. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, he was asked by Aisha uh, and tells us that the Prophet ﷺ said, Sha'ban Shahri. Sha'ban is my month. Wa Ramadan Shahrullah. 
and Ramadan is Allah's month. Wa Sha'ban al-Mutahhir wa Ramadan al-Mukaffir. So Sha'ban is my month and Ramadan is Allah's month. Now this is uh, this hadith is Mijma Zawaid. It's probably Hassan, not, not uh, Sahih, just FYI. Uh, and it's, but the, the, the meaning is sound. And the meaning is sound in that this is the month of the Prophet ﷺ because this is the month, at the very least, that the verses were revealed. Ya ayyuhalladina aminu. Inna Allahu wal malaikatu wa sallu ala nabi. Ya ayyuhalladina aminu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. But anyway, so back to my original point, which is that this month, is a month where shaitan is running after you, trying to mess up your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your relationships with people, and this is the month to fight that. This is the month to fight. And how do we fight this? We fight this by, by bringing showers. How do we bring showers? And, by, and here, when we're talking about showers, we're talking about not, like if you live in North America, or maybe even Malaysia, like I don't know how you feel about rain in Malaysia, or, but in North America, when I was growing up, we were like, oh, it's raining, because we wanted to go out and do something. And when I moved to Syria, it was so funny, because when I first moved there, I remember making plans like two months ahead of time, two months in advance, to be outside somewhere. And I was like, well, don't we have to like have a plan B? What if we can't be outside? And people looked at me like, huh, what are you talking about? Because I was worried about rain, but this was a summer appointment, so like, it doesn't rain. It's so rare. And subhanAllah, so you get to this feeling. I remember after living there a couple of years, I wrote a poem about rain in Damascus and how my, at, my, my attitude towards rain had changed. And I recognized the thirst of the earth and the thirst of the people for rain falling from the sky. And in America, we tend to get a little bit complacent and feel like, oh, it's raining again. It's snowing again is what I say in Minnesota. I mean, I guess you can't really see, but it's snowing. It, well, not, it's not snowing right now, but it, it did. But the truth is that the reason we have so much greenery and flowers and trees in Malaysia, mashallah, mashallah, the greenery of Malaysia, rich, dark green. The reason we have all of this is because of the rain that's falling from the sky. So when the rain comes, it brings richness. It brings richness to the earth. And in the same way, we, when the rain of Shaban, which I will tell you how to bring the rain of Shaban, the, the metaphoric rain of Shaban, brings the flowers, the beautiful flowers and richness to the heart in Ramadan. It helps us in Ramadan grow, grow the flowers and the greenery with the sun, if you will, of Ramadan to really, to extend the metaphor. Okay. Now, so what is, when I'm talk, speaking metaphorically like this, what do I mean by Sha'ban showers? Well, the first thing I mean is the, is the, the, um, the salawat. Because, as I said, this is the month where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we were ordered to say Salatu Salam on the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And so the ulama have really recommended that we do extra of it in this month, since this is the month when the verse was revealed. And if you do a lot of it in this month, in preparing for Ramadan, you develop a connection with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is really unique and special. And so instead of watching television, instead of, you know, doing other, whatever the things are that you usually do with your extra time, to spend time on a counter, I should have my counter next to me, I guess I left it upstairs. I have two desks, so I have a desk upstairs, and I guess my counter is upstairs. I was working on uh, something else up there. Uh, so to, to spend time saying, Allah, Salatu salam alayk, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah, for example, or Salatu salam alayk, Ya Habibi Ya Rasulullah, or Allahumma salli ala, Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Either one of these would work. And, but increasing it. So whatever, if it's, is it 100? Is it, you know what I mean? Like, what is that number that, that you want uh, to, to have, whether it's 100 or 200 or 500 or 1,000? But do it regularly. 70,000 salawat is what I usually recommend to my students in this month. It's a big number. It means that you have to do extra work to make it happen, it means you're going to have to spend time saying Salatu salam alayk, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah, or whatever form you want to say it in, it can be said in any form. There are books with form after form after form uh, right there 
in, uh, in these books of different ways to say peace and blessings on the Prophet ﷺ, or not even peace and blessings, like Salat is is bigger than that. It's much bigger than that. Uh, 700, you said, I said any number. I, I, I usually recommend to my personal students 70,000. Yeah. But I mean, any number is good. That number, there's no hadith about that number. There's no, like, there's, I, it's, it's, it's not a number pulled out of the sky. The ulama have recommended that number in the past, but it's not a, um, it's a number that's a big number, basically. And that's the idea behind it, to be a big number, but yet manageable. Like 100,000 would probably be too much to manage in the month, in one month. 70,000 is 2,500 a day. All right, and that's 500 after each prayer. So like that becomes something manageable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so in the, so that's one of the showers of this month to really fill us. And I wanted to say something about this uh, this salah, this salatu salam, with this word that we say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allahu ra'ikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayuhi ladhina amu sallu alayhi salimu tasliman. Uh, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. It's so amazing when we think about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Allah and his angels, you saluna ala nabi. So the, the, these, this word, we don't know how to translate it, and it's, we struggle to translate it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lauds the Prophet uh, says beautiful words about the Prophet, lauds him, like L-A-U-D, you know, it comes, the word applaud comes from it. It's, it's a word about sacredness. And with uh, Tasliman and and asks us to do the same and to send greetings. Okay, so in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. So the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa taala and the angels laud the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Oh, you who believe, ya ayuha ladina amanu. Oh, you who believe, sallu alaihi. So do the same, laud him. وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا And give him greetings of peace, Tasliman. So it's a beautiful thing to do in this month, and it really does affect your heart. I really want to recommend this to everyone in this month. So that's one way to gain the showers of this month. Another way to gain the showers of this month is to spend some time in dua about anything, but I want to specifically say about rizq. So rizq in Arabic is usually translated to mean provision, um, your store, what you have, your the things that come to you. So when we think about rizq, rizq uh, we think about money. How much money do you make every month? We think about education. How much do you know? Not necessarily how many degrees do you have, but what do you have of knowledge? I met when I was at Hajj in 2014. The last day I was in Medina, and somebody called me and said, there's a woman here who is of the awliya and I want you to meet her. And I'm ashamed to say that I was very tired and I almost said no because I, I guess I was feeling like I'm going to be leaving Medina tomorrow and I just want to spend the time in the Prophet's mosque. And I said it would be rude to say no, so I can't be rude in the Prophet's city. So I went. And uh, she was an elderly woman. And, uh, mashallah, she was, a, she was an elderly woman, and her talk was very interesting. But one of the things she said to me is, Allah gave me rizq, rizq of knowledge after I turned 40. And I'll never forget that sentence, because really what she was saying to me is she was recognizing the different kinds of knowledge that we can know. One of them is book knowledge. One of them is wisdom. And, and, and then there is that knowledge that comes from light. Light, which is um, having understandings that come to us, connections that come to us, things we just understand, that we don't know how come we understand them. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So another thing to do in this month of Sha'ban is to really make dua for, can consider, and think about our seeking of knowledge and the rizq of all kinds of rizq. The rizq, the rizq, I'm sorry, I say it in a Syrian way. The rizq, the rizq of, um, of, of money, we should make dua for rizq. SubhanAllah, you know, the, there is a trial in not having money and there is a trial in having it. The trial in not having it is the feeling of want. The trial in having it is the question of what you will do with it. 
But the beauty in having it, if you are a person of uh, striving on this path, is what you can do with it. Fi sabirillah. And we all know how you know how much is controlled by money. My my little thing about don't stop giving money to mosques and I'm not taking care of you. And when you, we have it, is that we can say, oh, you know that fifty thousand dollars I give you every year, I'm not going to give it to you <laughs> unless you. And then and I'm not and. I'm not, I just want to be clear here, I'm not encouraging people to give with um, conditions because actually the Quran discourages that. But I am encouraging people to, if you have to ask Allah for it uh, and, and be generous with it and wise and intelligent too. Like don't give money to places that are not building the, the faith. Um, yes, absolutely health is a result. Absolutely. Health and money and, um, and, and, and knowledge. These are all kinds of, and children. Uh, if you're not married and you want to get married, a husband, all of these things would be considered visit. And these are important things to ask for. So another thing to do in this month is definitely to uh, begin to, um, to make dua, sincere dua, for these things, good friends, absolutely, all these things. Because there is a hadith, it's a weak hadith, it's not a very strong hadith, but there is a hadith that says that the, um, that the rizq of the person for the year is written in this month and on this of Shaban. Now, whether, you know, whether it is or not, we can seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be the one who will answer our prayer. Inshallah. Time. Yes, time. So another thing to benefit from in this month is to ask Allah. Turn to Allah and ask him. Say, Ya Allah, send me money and friends and time. Knowledge. And then also think about how you're going to do that too. So how are you going to make sure that you have more knowledge? Work hard. How are you going to make sure that you are taking care of your financial situation, being smart about it? So you have money to give away. I have a, the vice president of diversity at the university I just, I'm about to graduate from, that I just finished my dissertation at. She, um, went, she's very, she's a really wonderful woman and she actually graduated from the same program that I'm in. And she said to me, I was consulting with her about something a couple of years back and we've sort of become friends. And she said to me, you know, I, I have a financial advisor and I tell him, I need you to find me ways not to increase my funds, but to increase the money that I have in hand that I can give away. I'll never forget that because that intention is really, was really powerful to me that she was looking for a way to have more money so that she could give it away. If that makes sense. So, I mean, that's another thing. And that's what is it in and of itself. Having generosity and good qualities is something that is beautiful as well. So that's another shower of Sha'ban, a generosity of Sha'ban that we can ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're, one thing we're doing is we're doing salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Salawat and taslim, salam. And then another thing that we're doing is making dua and asking for rizq of this month. The rizq, the rizq, the provision of this month, and all of the ways that it can be um, defined. We're asking for that in this, this month. And then we have in this month, uh, I want to say one thing before I talk about Nusuf Shabbat. Also, uh, another way that the, the early, the tabi'in, the early uh, companions, and the early people, another way they would use Shaban is for their zakat. So they would, they would t when Shaban would come in in the beginning of the month, the, the male, the, well, I was going to say the male, but actually anybody, I was going to say the male because I wanted to differentiate something between the male and female, but right now everybody, uh, they would pay their zakat in Shaban. Now, for us, we usually pay zakat in Ramadan, but actually, and we think because for more reward, right? But actually zakat is a fuddle. And in Shaban, we are to be giving charity. Now, I'm not saying there's something wrong with giving your zakat in Ramadan. Absolutely not. In fact, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you extra reward. But the early companions understood that, that Shaban was the time to take care of their fold so they could get ready for Ramadan. So these early uh, followers 
they would pay their zakat every Shaban, so that when Ramadan came, they were ready to give in charity, generous sadaqah, over and above what they'd already made sure to take care of in their, um, in their, in their wealth. And the other thing that in people, of course, do in Shaban is they fast. So the Prophet وسلم, used to fast in Shaban to such a degree that some of his wives would say it's almost as though he connected Shaban and Ramadan. So fasting in Shaban is greatly rewarded. And if you have fuddled fasting, Ya Banati, Ya Habibati, if you have fuddled fasting, you have only three weeks left. And if you have not got your period left this, yet this month, that means you have only two weeks left or whatever, however many days of your period. So it's time to get on the stick and fast and get done with these fuddled fasts. That's, I mean, it's much better to fast those earlier, FYI. Inshallah, this year can do them in Shawwal. But if you haven't done them, Shaban is the month to get caught up and get your fuddled for the year done. That paying of that debt will help you moving into Ramadan fresh and ready for this new month, not dragging days with you into the month. Now, for those of you who have hundreds of days to make up, obviously you can't do that in this month, um, but it would be good to make to begin to make a plan for how you will make them up. Having a plan is something that will help you, uh, help you enter into Ramadan with this feeling of relief and release and like without the heavy burden Sometimes you don't even know the burden that you're carrying. Um, okay, I'll get to your question, Sharifa, in a minute, okay? Uh, just give me one minute to finish up just a few things. Now, what is, so when this of Shaban comes, and this of Shaban will be in about seven days from today. Today's the eighth, so six days, six or seven days, seven. Uh, this of Shaban is the middle of the month, and the early companions used to spend the night of this of Shaban in prayer. Because there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, tells us that we, that on this night, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, uh, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the Prophet says, إِذَا كَانَتْ لَيْلَةْ نُصْفِ الشَّعْبَانِ If it is the middle of Shaban, فَقُومُ لَيْلَهَا Get up in, in its night, وَصُومُ نَهَارَهَا And fast its day. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَنْزِرُ فِيهَا Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala comes to the shams when the night the sun goes down to the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the sun goes down when Maghrib begins on this day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes near to us and says who is there Allah min mastaghfir who is there who is seeking forgiveness from me Allah that I can forgive him who is there that seeks rizq from me Allah mustazraq mustarzaq uh that I can give him rizq or her uh, who is in trial that I may heal him and make it better, etc., etc. So this is a time of great du'a. And so the early companions would stand up in that night and ask for forgiveness and ask for it and ask for things uh, until Fajr. And so it's called Ikhya al-Layl, which means to give life to the night or nightlife, as my four-year-old daughter once called it. And we started calling it that in our house. Uh, we also have a saying, this is not a hadith, but this is a quote from an early uh, scholar named Ata'Allah. He said, after the night of Laylat al-Qadr, ma ba'd Laylat al-Qadr, Layla afdal min Laylat nusa min al-Sha'ban. Laylat nusa, you know. There is no night better after the night of Laylat al-Qadr than the night of Nusr al-Sha'ban. Wahiyya min al-layali allati yastajaba fiha dua. This person said, it is of the nights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers in it, du'a. Okay? So this, it's very important in this night to spend it in worship. And it, you have a week to plan that. So alhamdulillah that we're talking about that now. So could somebody from the admin figure out what exactly uh, that night is? please, so that we can tell everybody based on when Shaban has been this month. Oh, how exciting. So if it's the Saturday, so is the Nusr Shaban on the 21st then? Because we have to be, be clear here a little bit about uh, uh, April. Yeah, so April 20th is Nusr Shaban. That means that it's Friday night that is, oh, wait, which one is it, ladies? 
Okay, so okay, so the twenty first is Nusra Shabbat. We got to say things clearly so we don't get confused. April twenty first first is the fifteenth of Shabbat. So that means that the eve before it, Saturday night, is a night of prayer. What an incredible blessing for everyone living in countries where Sunday is not a work day. What an incredible blessing. So that we can pray all night on a weekend and even have our families get up and pray with us on that night. Yeah, Allah, what, incredi what an incredible blessing. So we just need to plan for that and be ready for it and really really do it. Poor me, I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to have to figure that one out myself too. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, inshallah, inshallah, we'll be able to do it. Alhamdulillah. So it is a night of, of very, of great importance. It is a blessed night. Um, some of the early uh, companion, the early uh, scholars, they would put a plan, which I'll share with you. This is not, again, this is not the Prophet didn't do this, but some of the early scholars would encourage people to, between Maghrib and Aisha on that day, to read Surah Yasin three times. And uh, in between each one, each time, to make dua, a special dua that they wrote that's for this night. And we can po we'll post that on our Facebook page and in different places so that you can see that dua. And uh, subhanAllah, yani this, it doesn't really matter what you do. But it's important to have, in the YouTube comments, we'll post it, all right. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you do so much as that you do something. Yes, the Qiyam is on Saturday night and the fast is on Sunday. But that we make a plan for dua and fasting and make a plan for the showers of Shaban. So we've, we've talked about three. Uh, yeah, sure. Good idea, Anne. Absolutely. You can listen to it three times and then make dua. Yeah. In fact, you could listen and follow with your eyes. That'd be really good. That would be a good practice as well. Okay, so the we've said three, we talked about three different kinds of showers in Shaban. The first one was protecting ourselves from shaitan. That that when we recognize that shaitan is here trying to mess things up for us, we are we are pushing him out of the way. So he's like he's like this plastic cover over us preventing us from the beauty of this month. We push and trying to prevent us from the beauty of Ramadan. We push him out of the way so that the blessing and the showers of mercy can come down upon us. Okay, so we move that away. The second one was to do salawat, to increase in salawat and to do a lot of salawat. And the third one was to make dua. So I guess we did four, to make dua, so much dua uh, during this month for, for rizq, different types of rizq. And the fourth one is to observe Nusuf Shaban. By observe Nusuf Shaban, I mean to pray at night and fast in the day. And so we have to have a fifth because we always have to have, I like to have uh, odd numbers. So, and then I'll get to your questions, all right? So the, let's say the fifth one then uh, would be in this, oh, the fifth one was, oh, we did the fifth one, alhamdulillah. The fifth one, actually the fourth one. So the fourth one, is to take care of your furud in this month and to fast extra. Uh, maybe pay zakat. If you usually pay zakat for Ramadan, you can go ahead. You don't have to rush to do it. But take care of your furud fasting if you're not done with them yet. And if you're done with them, fast extra because that is a blessing, a blessed thing as a sunnah of the Prophet in this month. And then the fifth one is the subshaba. Okay, so those are the five types of showers that we want to receive in this Ramadan so we can grow our Ramadan flowers. Next month we'll have a Ramadan open halaqah and we'll talk about how to grow those flowers, inshallah. All right, let me answer some of your questions here. So um, somebody asked about pills. Is it appropriate if we get pills to skip our menses for Ramadan? Um, I would say to you that if you get one regular period in the month of Ramadan, I would definitely not recommend that you get pills in order to skip it. You can use that time for all sorts of other things that are blessed in Ramadan including cooking for people, doing all of your charity work. I don't, I don't menstruate anymore, but when I did when I was younger, I would use that week for all the charity work that I was doing. I would let, I'd, you know, make it all happen in that week. So get it done. You have the strength because you're not fasting and you're, you can just take care of it. So it's a really good idea to use that week for that. Um, if you have a, a problem and so you're like, you're menstruating more days than you're fasting, then I would recommend that you do see a doctor 
and talk about what you might be able to do to control to get your period to be a little bit more normal so that you can not feel like you're missing so many days. That's my recommendation, but definitely with a doctor involved in that with you. And if you're, you know, you can also, if your doctor isn't really being understanding, you can talk to another doctor and you can see a couple of different doctors and get some opinions and think it through. But definitely keep your health in mind and don't consider the days of menstruation days away from Ramadan. You are in Ramadan whether you're menstruating or not. You're in Ramadan whether you're menstruating or not. Okay. Uh, and there are just different kinds of things to do, which brings us to Sophia's question. She says, for women menstruating during that night, any specific adhkar or, or du'as? Well, we will put in the YouTube comments, we'll put the du'a of Nusuf Shaban. But also, again, I, I would suggest the la'al al-khayrat. I really would recommend the la'al al-khayrat. I used to have the book right next to me. I guess it's next to my, it's somewhere else right now. But um, the la'al al-khayrat is a nice little book. It is a whole book of salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu What a beautiful night to do that in. And so to do that and to just sit and read it in that night would be a beautiful thing to do. And even you could do it with your children. And, you know, if you like, uh, if it's hard for you to stand for a long time in prayer, it's a beautiful thing to do, whether you are menstruating or not. Like, it's, it's a beautiful thing to do. I don't know, Liz, that's a good question if there's a PDF available. I bet somebody will write it for you. Dala'il al khayrat Or any dot book, but that one is particularly, uh, Useful. There's also Majalis and Nur. There's a there's a du'a book, uh, the Gathering of Illuminations that has a lot of beautiful du'a in it. You could also read through that. That's also incredibly beautiful. And that is in that one is available at daybreak. All right. And I think do we have uh, so we repeated them already. Protecting ourselves from shaitan, increasing in salawat, making du'a for is it? Make it miss fast or fasting extra and observing this or Shaban. Yes, those are the five. Thank you, Maryam. Thank you very much. Okay. And any other questions that you have? Increasing. So, oh, okay. So, salawat on the Prophet So, let's, uh, let's clarify what I mean. Incre so, say a num many, many times. So, that's make, say, say the, to use the word increasing makes the assumption that you're already saying, Salat al-Salam alayk ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah, for example. If, but so to, to do salawat, to say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad in the month of Ramadan, uh, sorry, in the month of Sha'ban many times. That's what we mean by salawat there. Salawat ala nabi Thank you for that question for clarif clarification, because otherwise that is confusing. All right, any other questions or comments? Inshallah, next week at this time, it will be Saturday, and that night we will be planning for our Nusuf Shaban. Ah, oh, someone found the Dada'al al Khairat in English. That's great. Maybe we could find it in Arabic. I mean, I think it should be in Arabic. It should, it should be in Arabic, but you could do some in English too. Ah, what's my advice for those who have 200 fasts to make up? Well, first of all, if you didn't see it, there's a little Facebook live video of me and Leslie from Daybreak talking about her making up of 320 days of fasting. And what she did is she planned it out and she would fast in the winter months. And it became really beloved to her and she finished, mashallah. So my advice is to plan it out not to overwhelm yourself, to think about the next few years that maybe December, January, February, you do some four days a week fasting or something like that. And you start, and they all start to add up until they get done. And, uh, but I recommend in the winter months because they're short days and easier depending on where you live, obviously. Okay, so Tanya, you're confused about rizq and qadr. Uh, that's a longer conversation, but um, to a simple answer to that is there are some things of qadr, qada or qadr, that are unchangeable, like, or that don't, they're not fluid at all. And those are things like who your parents are, how tall you are, stuff like that. 
And then there are some things that are fluid based on dua and good deeds. And that includes, there are hadith that include rizq in those things. So asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our rizq is definitely uh, a benefit. Alhamdulillah. Okay, and uh, uh, any other questions? And if not, alaini wa rasi wa iyaki ya rab. Is it better to use al-khairat in Arabic even without understanding? Um, some of it, yeah, because it's saying salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, it's, yeah, I would say that if you do read Arabic, that yeah, it would be beneficial. And there's a lot of repetition, so a lot of it you're going to understand. Maybe what you could do is get the English and the Arabic and sort of compare them. I wonder if there's a version out that has both next to each other. I bet there is. Uh, is it better to read, let's see, is the talk is on Rabata FP page? Yeah, I think it's also on the Rabata YouTube page. Usually we also put them there for, to make them easy to find. Well, Farhia, it, whatever, like I'm just recommending it as something to do for someone who doesn't have prayer, or even if you do. It's just, it's a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful thing. And you can, it's broken up into sections each day. You can do the whole thing in one night. You can do it however you want. Thank you, Aisha. How do you suggest to protect from the shaitan when we do feel as insecure as you mentioned earlier? Well, very simply, first of all, 80% of the problem is solving it. So you say, okay, I know the shaitan is affecting me. Number two, you say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan al rajim Number three, if you can't read Surah Al-Baqarah in your home, play it at least on a player so that it can cleanse your house. Uh, number four, uh, well, or, or read it yourself, which is also very important. Number four, stay in wudu if you can. If you can stay in wudu, that's often very, very helpful. Um, number five, just really be conscious of the thoughts in your head and when you feel like they're just ugly thoughts, say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan al rajim and just really like, even if you just go, ah, Feel, you know, that's it. No, like just to really push into a place where you find peace and uh, tranquility and, you're, and we're not easily listening to Shaytan. Oh, can somebody find the FB Live with Leslie, please? And we will also put the FB Live with Leslie in the YouTube comments once we stick it up on in our channel. Okay, thank you so much. You guys are the best. MashaAllah. Oh, there's an app. How exciting. MashaAllah. All right, well, that brings us to the top of the hour. May Allah reward you all, and I hope that Shaban brings many beautiful showers to you and that Ramadan will bring many beautiful flowers for you. And it will be a beautiful Ramadan. I was in Kuwait last year for Ramadan, and I've been thinking and missing Kuwait a lot. Lean, I see you here. Uh, and thinking about... Uh, that real beauty of being in a Muslim country. I'm back in Minnesota this year and I'll be here. And I'm also looking forward to it here. We'll have a daybreak pop-up mosque in Ramadan as usual. And we will be having events there. If you're in Minnesota or coming near Minnesota, we'd love to have you visit us. Sunday night, Tarawiyah, Tuesday, Iftar and Tarawiyah, and Friday, Atikaf in our pop-up mosque. Um, so yeah, love to have you here anytime. Also, just wanna let you know, you live in Minneapolis, Tanya? What? Oh my gosh. Woohoo! I'm so excited. That's so exciting. <laughs> we will spend Ramadan together. Well, you're invited to my house for dinner next Thursday. <laughs> All of the, the daybreak halakha people. So you belong, you're a daybreak halakha person now because you live in Minneapolis. So you'll get information from, from the daybreak thread. Let's get you on a daybreak thread. Uh, actually, could admins PM Tanya so that we can get her on the daybreak there so she can get all the information? Alhamdulillah. That's so exciting. All right. Um, so just really quickly, I want to tell you about something, too, so you can do this. So we, our educational fundraiser this year is going to be called I Am Yuseba. And if you remember last year, we had you nominate your Aisha. So we got all of these amazing nominations of women around the world, really, who were living as an Aisha. So this year, it's nominate your new Seba. And the deadline for nominations is May 1st. So I want you to start thinking about it. I want you to nominate your new Seba. We have nine categories. Uh, could our admins put up the, uh, we have, I have them, thank you. We have nine categories, defender of the Prophet So a woman you know who defends the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
um, a mother, someone who has really has maybe struggled as a mom or just she's just an amazing mom and you want to nominate her. A community mother, so someone who mothers the community. She doesn't have to be a biological mother of anyone, but she mothers the community. Uh, our fourth category is someone who's courageous. Our fifth category is someone who is a flag bearer with her hijab. So maybe, maybe she's the first woman to wear a hijab in her industry. Or maybe she just struggles with it, but she does it anyway. Uh, number six is someone who's dedicated and loyal. Seven is panitat, which means a worshiper, some spiritual, someone who's really spiritual in your community who you know you want to nominate her. Uh, number eight, a positive cultural change agent. And number nine, a leader in the community. So nominate your new sebas. They don't have to be famous. In fact, and they can be men or women, by the way. They can be young or old, any age, any gender, <laughs> men, women, children. Well, I mean, maybe not children. These are, well, maybe flag bearer with hijab, maybe a young person who started wearing hijab in a, in a difficult space, maybe. Uh, nominate your new sebas. And it's really good for the community. We all get all this bad news all the time. When we're hearing about these amazing women in our community, it's so uplifting and brings so much hope. And that's our goal here at Rabata. So nominate your Nuseba so that we can uh, we can um, have our Nusebas in the month of Ramadan. Also, a reminder for those of you who are writers or know a writer, the Daybreak Book Awards is ongoing. The deadline is, uh, is April 31st. And what that means is that people, the Daybreak Literary Awards or Daybreak Book Awards, it means that people will be, our authors, just go to the site and you'll read what to do. And then two other things, if you have a teenager who is a, a, a girl, uh, the Friends Fun and Faith Camp will be held in the United States in Ohio, and there will be a UK Friends Fun and Faith Camp in August. So definitely register for your, your teen for the summer camp. And finally, our Ribat retreat will be in New Mexico this year. I'm so excited. And uh, so we will be in Ribat, and we have a little extra space. We always have closed registration so fast in the past. Alhamdulillah, because we're going to this place on purpose to make it bigger for all of you to be able to come. Our theme is Sira, and it's going to be really something else. So come to the Raise Me Up Ribat retreat next summer, July 25th to July 29th and reserve your space there as well. But do reserve your space because even though people usually, usually it closes us down and we do have more space, I still worry. I would, would not want to have to say no to anybody. Uh, will there, do you mean open halakha, Aisha? Yes, there will be sessions in Ramadan as well, inshallah. I'm not, I don't travel in Ramadan, so as much as I travel sometimes other times of the year, I have an I don't travel Ramadan rule. So people invite me to speak here and there, but I don't go, unless it's in Minnesota. So I'm in daybreak and uh, we will be here. Uh, we have a baby uh, policy. I don't remember what it is. So get on there and you'll see. There's an age, there's like an age limit of the baby, the baby policy. I don't remember. So, so all right. All right. Thank you everyone for joining me this morning. It's been lovely to spend this morning with you. May Shaban bring showers, beautiful, beautiful showers for all of our hearts and all of our lives. Showers of every beautiful thing that you need or could imagine or dream of and even things you could not imagine of greatness. And Charlotte will, these showers will raise beautiful flowers in our Ramadan and we will have one of the best Ramadans we've ever had in our lives. Inshallah. Allah alaykum and bless you and keep you. And inshallah, we will see you next month. But do set, set, nominate your Nusaybas, okay? And look for our educational fundraiser in Ramadan. We do that for our annual fund. So we do depend on your donations in Ramadan to keep us sustained and growing. So look forward to, to that as well. And uh, learning about different women, the women around the country and more about Nuseiba bint Ka'ab radiallahu anha in the month of Ramadan. All right, assalamu alaikum everyone. Take care.